This is Jared Horak, and in this horse racing handicapping video, I'm going to analyze the Grade 1 Clark Stakes at Churchill Downs, Friday, November 24th, 2023. If you're interested in my full card analysis at Del Mar, head on over to my personal website, therunawayhorse.com, on my sales page. You will find those full cards each day that Del Mar runs. They're running four days on Thanksgiving week, Thanksgiving Day, November 23rd, Then they're also running the 24th, 25th, and 26th, and then the, five, the week after Thanksgiving, they're going to be running Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's their closing week. And you will find those full cards uh, each day that Del Mar runs at therunawayhorse.com on my sales page. You can also purchase my full cards at todaysracingdigest.com. And speaking of the Digest, if you head on over to their website in their news section, you will find handicapping articles that I've been writing, um, Del Mar handicapping articles, uh, plenty of them over there. So go on over to todaysracingdigest.com to read my Del Mar handicapping articles. And in the description in this video, I'll provide links to those Del Mar handicapping articles and also to my full cards. Then I also do a daily best bets blog at horseracingnation.com. Been doing that for many years. I'll provide the link for that as well. And then also on the Del Mar website, if you, if you go over to the free pick section and you scroll down and you hit Horse Racing Nation, just click there and you'll find a bonus free pick at Del Mar each day. And now, We'll get into the analysis of this video. The 11th race at Churchill Downs for Friday, November 24th, the grade one $600,000 Clark Stakes for three-year-olds and up a mile and an eighth on the main track with a 5.48 p.m. Eastern time, post time, straight arrow, a sharp New York bred gelded son of arrogant will start out the field and he's four for seven lifetime with a runner up finish and he exits back to back sharp wins in the mud at Aqueduct. On October 15th, a race originally scheduled for turf run at one mile on the main track and he broke from the inside post and he stalked and then he kicked away and he won by nine lengths. He stepped up to face Stakes Company, New York Bread Stakes Company in the Empire Classic at a mile and an eighth in the mud. And from the outside post in a nine horse field, he stalked outside. He took over and he won by almost three lengths. So he's never been better. Florin Giroux is going to ride and he's probably going to save ground stalking the pace in a tough test for him. First mission is next. This is a Godolphin, a Street Sense Colt. Brad Cox is the trainer and Luis Saez is the rider. And I've always liked this one and he's run four times. He has plenty of upside with three wins in a second. That second place finish was in his sixth furlong debut. Too short for him. He fell three quarters of a lane short but behind Bishop's Bay, his stable mate. Bishop's Bay was a next out winner. First mission was a next out maiden winner at a mile and a 16th at the fairgrounds in March. And from post eight in a 10 horse field, he stalked from second. He took over and he won by almost seven. I made him my top choice in the grade three Lexington stakes. He was losing Lasix that day. Post four in a 10 horse field, Arabian Lion was the controlling speed. First mission was chasing the pace in third. And he was able to wear down Arabian Lion and win by a half length. And Disarm was the show finisher that day. So that was a quality field. And then I made first mission uh, my top choice in the Preakness stakes. It was supposed to be his next start but he ended up scratching Preakness Week and not running. So then I ended up picking National Treasure because he was the controlling speed and he uh, ended up winning uh, that race. Uh, so first mission uh, finally resurfaced. Um, that Lexington Stakes was April 15th and then on October 14th was his next start against optional claiming non-winners of two other than that was an $80,000 optional claimer for three-year-olds and up at a mile and a 16th at Keeneland. And from the inside post in an eight-horse field, he was stalking the pace, just waiting for racing room, and he found that racing room in the stretch, and he won by a neck. Command performance was second there, and command performance uh, flattered first mission when he came back and won his next start. And command performance used to be a decent sort. He was in the Todd Pletcher barn. He was on my derby list. As a two-year-old, he was second in the Champagne Stakes. He was fourth in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile and then he didn't pan out as a three-year-old. But then later on in his three-year-old season, he did win a couple of races. And then he ended up um, moving to the Joe Sharp barn, and he ran that quality race against First Mission, and then uh, Command Performance came back and won his next start. Uh, so First Mission is one with a lot of upside. He's got good tactical speed and an inner post, obvious contender in here. Back-to-back -back bullet works at Churchill Downs as well on November 10th and November 17th. Bill Miracolo, number three, he's four to one morning line. And this son of gun runner has run 15 times, three wins, five seconds and a third. He struggled in the stakes ranks earlier in his career, 
Um, no threat in the Mucho Macho Man Stakes, the Holy Bull, Fountain of Youth, Florida Derby, and Belmont Stakes. He just struggled in all of those races. But then in the restricted Curlin Stakes, he woke up at Saratoga, finishing second to Scotland that day. And then that started a string of good efforts. He won the Grade 3 Smarty Jones Stakes at Parks in August. And then in the Grade 1 Pennsylvania Derby, he was third in the slop uh, behind Saudi Crown. And then in the Grade 2 Fayette Stakes at a mile and an eighth at Keeneland, he was second beaten ahead behind my top choice, O'Connor. So Irmiro Colo, five starts at this distance with no wins, two seconds and a third. And he hasn't run at Churchill yet, but he's in very good form right now. And we'll see if he can put another good effort together. Gasoline for trainer Todd Pletcher. This is the gelded son of Curlin with 11 starts, four wins, a second and a three third place finishes. He's two for three at Churchill and one for three with a show finish at a mile and an eighth. He's in good form in his last four starts. He had a win at a mile and three sixteenths in the slop in January of this year, going wire to wire at Aqueduct. And then in his next start, he was third at a mile and three sixteenths. And then a mile and a sixteenth, he cut back in an optional claiming non-winners two other than, and he stalked and scored. And then he earned a decent speed rating last time out at Churchill, optional claiming 100,000 non-winners of three other than he stalked and then he just kicked away and he won by more than five lengths. So he's in excellent form. Flavian Pratt's aboard. He's probably going to sit a good stalking trip in here and he's a contender for sure. Trademark is six to one and he's number five for Vicky Oliver and Fernando de la Cruz is going to ride and he's five for 21 lifetime. He does like Churchill, five starts with three wins in a second. And he's one for four at this distance. He was seventh, beating 13 lengths in the Fayette last time. But prior to that, if he can run his form prior to the Fayette, he's a contender. He was second, beating ahead in the Lucas Classic at this distance. The Philip Islin, the grade three at Monmouth. He was second by a half length. And then he won a little $100,000 stakes race, a listed race uh, at Horseshoe Indianapolis under Fernando de la Cruz in July. So look for him to stalk the pace in here. Film star, a pace factor for trainer Linda Rice. 16 starts, four wins, six seconds and a third. He's 0 for 2 at Churchill with a show finish. And then five starts at this mile and an eighth distance, two wins in two seconds. So this distance is his friend. The 49er stakes agreed to last time, a one-turn mile. Just couldn't quick. And I think that that race was probably too short for him. He was fourth, beating a length in three quarters. Before that, the Woodward Zandon defeated him, but he was a decent second after stalking and taking the lead. And then an optional claiming race at this distance prior to that, he wired the field. And then an entry-level allowance race at this distance uh, back in September, uh, he wired the field there too. So he likes to get out there, and I think if he can get out there and set the pace, he can hang in there for quite some time. Uh, the next horse in line is Giant Game, and he's another one that should impact the pace. 13 starts, 3 wins, 3 seconds, and 2 thirds. Gasoline defeated him last time out, and Giant Game uh, was chased from second, made a bid for the lead, and then was clearly second best as the beaten favorite. Prior to that, in the Charlestown Classic, he was sixth, beaten nine lengths. In the Grade 1 Whitney, he was fifth, beaten 11 lengths, but White Abario, Azandon, and Cody's Wish were the horses that were one, two, three, and they were all next out stakes winners. White Abario winning the Breeders' Cup Classic, Azandon uh, winning uh, the Woodward, and then Cody's Wish winning a little stakes race uh, prior to winning uh, the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Uh, so he faced some good horses that day, and he's one that won the Cornhusker Stakes at a mile and an eighth going wire to wire, and that was a grade three earlier this year. And he likes to get out there and be part of the pace. Happy American doesn't like to get out there. He likes to do his best running in the stretch. Seven starts at Churchill with three wins and two-thirds. Not his best distance here. Eight starts with a win and two show finishes and he was a well-beaten eighth in the Fayette in the Lucas Classic he was fifth but he can hit the board sometimes in these races in the grade one Stephen Foster he rallied for the show in the Blaine Stakes at Churchill he rallied for the show there as well so he's won look for him late wouldn't be shocked if he got a minor award stage raider for trainer Cherie DeBeau this is a pioneer of the Nile horse and he's uh, has 12 starts with four wins in four seconds he's run once at Churchill with a runner-up finish and he's Got a victory at this distance in his lone try at a mile and an eighth. He's going to be stretching out. He was in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. He was nowhere. But prior to that, in the grade three ACAC, he was second. And then he won um, uh, the Cowboy Jones Stakes at Ellis Park at a mile uh, prior to that. And he used to be in the Chad Brown Barn. But then in, for those last three starts, he moved up to the Cherie DeBeau Barn. Brian Hernandez Jr. rode in the last three. He'll ride back. He's better than his Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. But I don't know that he's quite this good. 
And then uh, Blue Devil is next. This is the gelded son of Uncle Mo with 13 starts, three wins, four seconds, and two thirds. Uh, he's run once at Churchill with a show finish, and then uh, at this distance, two starts with a win and a third. His third was in the Lucas Classic, beating three quarters of a length with Clapton winning that one, trademark second. And then Blue Devil was clearly best of the rest in third. And prior to that, he had won back to back races at Saratoga in the mud and in a race originally scheduled uh, for the um, turf course. So look for him uh, to probably try to stalk wide in here. A tough test for, for this horse. So I think there's a few different ways you can go. I can, I can see this race of uh, being fairly competitive. Um, you have a pace that looks at least honest. Uh, one of the first contenders is gasoline. I think he definitely can be used. Um, he might even offer a little bit of value in here. Il Miracolo is just so consistent. I can certainly see him uh, doing something in this spot. Uh, first mission, uh, certainly a contender. And then if you're uh, playing trifectas and superfectas, maybe throw Happy American in there at 20 to 1. He's just a horse that can run late if the pace is honest. And I think the pace will be honest in here. I'm going to go with first mission. I've always liked this one. He was going to be my Preakness top choice. He hasn't done anything wrong around two turns. He's three for three, only has four starts. His best races should be in front of him. He, that was a perfect prep for this last time out in his first start since April when he won that October 14th race over next out winner command performance. Back-to-back -back bullet works at Churchill. So there's a lot to like here. Inner post, tactical speed. He's the, probably the deserving favorite. He was the favorite in his last three, and he won all of those races. And he'll probably be the favorite, but I don't think they're going to hammer him to four to five or anything like that. But he will certainly be the favorite in here, and I think deservingly so. Uh, so I'm going to pick um, first mission as my top choice in this Clark Stakes, and I'm definitely going to make Gasoline my second choice. I'll make Il Miracolo my third choice and rounding out my top four, a happy American. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you like this horse racing content. And make sure, as I said before, uh, to check out my full cards at therunawayhorse.com on my sales page and my handicapping articles at todaysracingdigest.com. And that will wrap up this video. And until I see you next time, good luck at the races. <music>